It only took me about three semesters and five failed exams, but I figured it out. Let's talk about how I think I'm going to be studying from now until I graduate in four years and a half. There's three, maybe four techniques I am now using to take notes in med school. The first one I haven't changed since day one. You can check out these two videos. It's space repetition. Consuming information in med school is like trying to drink water out of a fire hose. It's a lot. And the only way to keep on top of it is by like space repetition because nothing goes in the first time. It takes two, three, maybe four, five times to get in here. And that's why space repetition is so important. The second, the second technique I use is active recall. And I have a whole video on that over here. And I basically use what I said in that video. Um, in class, except that I don't use it for every single class. See, I've divided my classes into memorization classes and understanding classes. And of course, these are generalizations because every single class requires memorization and every single class requires understanding. But broadly speaking, there are some classes in which I have to learn the signs, symptoms, And so it's a completely different set of skill sets that I need to use in order to get the same, like those two informations into my brain. And they're not going to go in using the same type of studying. I study using spaced repetition with the exact same number of intervals for both. The second technique I use mainly for memorization classes is active recall, in which during class, as the teacher is speaking and as I'm reading the slides, I'm writing out questions for myself with the answers underneath them that I will then, during space repetition, go and try to think about what the answer to the question is, and answer it, and then grade myself. So just very briefly, for memorization classes, active recall, space repetition, and if I see or notice that the teacher is going way too fast, or I'm starting to lose track of what the teacher is saying because I'm trying to take notes, I stop taking notes, listen to what the professor is saying fully, and then at the end of the class, I will make questions that I missed from the slides that I pasted on the document that I use. And now for the understanding classes, well, that's a bit more complicated. I've kind of merged these two techniques-ish. One of them is somewhat like stream of consciousness writing, and the other one is listening. And I'm just going to call that, I'm going to explain it, I'm going to call it just active or like physically active or just active listening. If you remember this video, you watched it, you know that one of the biggest issues I faced while I was in class was staying focused slash paying attention and I would just zone out. I wasn't able to follow what the professor was saying for two, four, six hours at a time, which personally I think is understandable, but that's okay. And so this active listening process lets me like listen to what the professor is saying and process it at the same time or pretty much simultaneously. Okay, this is going to seem a bit like a random branch, but it's connected, I promise. I've trained myself to have a higher than average typing speed of around 90 words per minute. And I've also learned to touch type. Both of these things allow me to do this active listening in understanding classes, which is listen to what the professor is saying and look at the professor as they're walking, as they're pacing and look at their slides. And that's the listening part. All my attention is on the professor and what they're saying. And my fingers, what they're doing is typing out whatever the professor is trying to say, how I understand it, linking it to what I know, to what I've read in the books, to what the slides say, but not really being attached to these notes, not emotionally attached, not proud of them because they're not coherent, they're not full sentences, they're misspelled. It's not about what the notes say, it's about me engaging both my listening, my brain, and my fingers to process what the professor is saying while I still pay attention to them. And this works because these notes aren't gonna be my main reference when I'm doing space repetition and studying for these subjects. The slides are, and the book is, and my classmates are, not the notes. The notes I might fall back on if I can puzzle them out, but I don't care what I'm typing out as long as it's connected to the class that I'm not zoning out because the most important part in this process is the information that is now being processed in my brain going from something that I might not understand if only the teacher is saying it 
to something more structured as I'm trying to put it into semi-coherent sentences. I think for traditional note-taking in which you're trying to build something coherent, the importance is very much not so on the input, but on the output through your fingers onto the paper, onto the page. If I do that, I found that I lose track of what the professor is saying. If I focus instead on the input from the professor into me, then the output doesn't really matter. And that's what I found worked for me the best. And maybe it worked for you. I think you should try it out. And if you want to check out the template for my memorization classes that I've used since the first day of class, you can click in the link in the description. And if you want to subscribe here, and if you want to watch uh, another video here, see you next week.